Greetings, and thank you for joining the newest installment of RALCO Recorded Webinars. My name is Ben Bjork. I'm the Ruminant Product Specialist here at RALCO. And today I'll be reviewing GFI 263, really with the goal of answering some of your questions and concerns over how this regulation will affect your operation going forward. So we'll talk about GFI, uh, what it means, the definition of it, kind of a background or history of, of how we got to this point. We'll also talk about the products that are impacted by GFI 263, how to become GFI compliant, and then ultimately how to reduce the need for antibiotics. So back in 2013, um, the FDA announced industry guidance in a national effort to reduce the use of medically important antibiotics in food producing animals and the potential of resistance to antibiotics. And this came about really due to years of data collection on this uh, resistance. And then certainly public perception over the misuse of antibiotics in human medicine, as well as animal use. And then in 2017, Guidance for Industry or GFI for short, 213 is implemented resulting in the current veterinary feed directive or VFD that we know of today, which requires a prescription for all feed and water delivered antibiotics. So uh, GFI ultimately eliminated the use of antibiotics for production purposes um, like growth and feed efficiency and ultimately brought them under the veterinary supervision. So that brings us to today and GFI 263, which is really just an extension of GFI 213. It's not necessarily new. Um, this has been planned from the beginning. And honestly, uh, any antibiotic that was uh, produced after the year 2013 has been has needed a prescription going forward. So really, this is nothing new. It's just been being rolled out this year. So this is going to apply to the remaining over-the-counter antibiotic products used to address health challenges in those other dosage forms, such as injectables and oral. So the guidance is going to require a prescription from a veterinarian for all previously over-the-counter antibiotics. And as alluded to before, um, this GFI 263 is going into full effect on June 11th of 2023. So in a few short months, uh, we'll have to be prepared to, to know what we're doing with GFI 263. So some of the products impacted by GFI 263 um, the oxytetracycline family, penicillin, sulfa-based antibiotics, tylosin, and then cefaparin and cefaparin benzidine are all going to come under uh, this GFI 263 regulation. And so some of the common forms of these oxytetracyclines, um, many of you will, will recognize LA-200, normycin-300, agromycin, and then teramycin boluses, and then oxy-500 calf boluses. Uh, the penicillins are also going to come under scrutiny. So uh, CombiPen 48, Propen G, uh, Masticlear and go dry intramammary tubes are commonly used. And then sulfa-based antibiotics. And these are really recognizable um, in the cow-calf industry as many of our producers are using Sustain 3 boluses for calf scours and then sulfa med injections uh, for the same thing. So just keep in mind these, these are going to need a prescription after June 11th. Uh, Tylosin or Thailand 200 and Thailand 50, which are commonly used in cattle and swine to treat pneumonia, shipping fever, foot rot, things like that, is also going to come under this label. And then, of course, the uh, today and tomorrow um, mastitis treatments or intermammary tubes are also commonly used, and, and those are going to come under the T GFI. 263. So now that we know kind of some of the products and, and what to expect, how do we become GFI 263 compliant? Uh, first, we're going to need to establish a veterinary client patient relationship or a VCPR for short. Use a prescription from a licensed veterinarian to purchase previously over the counter antibiotics. Develop a good plan to be prepared for emergency situations. Find antibiotic alternatives that don't require a prescription. 
and then ultimately administer these products, whether they're alternative or antibiotics at key intervention points so that we can keep these animals healthy. Ultimately, that's our goal. Everybody wants to make sure that their animals are healthy and, and we're gonna get we're gonna get to that point. So in order to be to uh, uh, get a VCPR exists when your veterinarian knows your herd well enough to diagnose and treat any health challenges. Minimum requirements are going to be controlled by the state veterinarian, and they can vary state by state and also by individual veterinarian. The responsibility to keep records of prescriptions is going to mainly lie with the vet and the supplier. However, you as a producer, um, in the unlikely event that you would be audited, you will need to show some records on, on how these products were used, when and for what reason. Um, so it's a good idea to really keep pretty good records, at least for a year. And that may be as simply, simple as writing it down in a notebook or maybe taking a picture of a whiteboard where you have these uh, administrations recorded. Um, so next is how do we establish a VCPR? Um, and, and one of the things we did, we took a couple of different approaches in researching GFI 263. We looked at the FDA website to kind of get general information on this topic. But beyond that, we also interviewed several vets in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, we talked to some university vets and practicing vets um, in several states. And we did this to really get an idea on how these veterinarians were going to handle these requirements on a case-by-case -case basis. So one of the things that came out of that was really we should be talking to several vets in the area to find the one that meets your operational needs. Because every operation is not going to be the same. Um, one vet that that maybe uh, can handle large, large production cycles isn't going to want to go to a cow-calf or vice versa. Uh, once you find a good vet, that vet will conduct a farm visit to examine your herd in person. Some of the things they may be looking for are historical challenges, um, so they can try and predict what types of antibiotics you may need. They, they may also go over general animal handling and good husbandry practices, as well as good overall sanitation and nutrition. They'll also want to discuss possible vaccination and also antibiotic use protocols. As far as how long these visits may take, that's really going to depend on the size and type of operation. Could be anywhere from, you know, 30 minutes to maybe even an hour and a half. And of course, it's going to uh, depend on, on the size of your operation. So at least one farm visit per year is going to be required. But that can vary by state. So it may be one or maybe two, three, four. Um, and it's also going to vary by veterinarian and also type of production system. So if you are a, uh, you know, a cow calf or, or maybe a goat or sheep operation, you'll likely be able to get by with one visit per year. A grower or a feed yard where there are multiple turns of cattle will likely require more. Um, and one other thing to keep in mind, a VCPRs, can't be established online or via email or over the phone. It must be an in-person visit. So once your VCPR is established, um, you can simply call your vet's office to fill your prescriptions for what you may need. Um, the vet can also fill a prescription and have it sent to your supplier, generally without an in-person examination. So once these VCPRs are put in place, um, generally, you can just make a phone call and your vet can fill out that prescription to get you what you need. These prescriptions are typically valid for a year. Um, and, and in the case of emergency, these prescriptions can be filled prior to the time it's needed. And this is probably going to be more common than uncommon. Because as we stated earlier, you know, when, when you need these antibiotics, these injectables, generally they are a uh, immediate use need. So it's a good idea to have some of this on hand before you need it. So next we wanna really go into how, how can we reduce the need for antibiotics? Because ultimately I think that's the goal of every good producer um, is to get healthy animals without the need of antibiotics. So first we should probably go over the difference between an antibiotic and antimicrobial or antibiotic replacements. So antibiotics are typically going to have one mode of action 
that specifically target bacteria. Whereas antimicrobials like essential oils have multiple modes of action that when formulated correctly, can act on a variety of microbes like bacteria, fungi, viruses, and protozoa. So antibiotics are, are gonna kill all the bacteria. They don't, they don't necessarily distinguish good bacteria from bad bacteria, where antimicrobials are gonna have multiple modes of action and kill multiple uh, organisms. Antimicrobials can be natural and used without the oversight of the FDA's industry guidance. And you're not going to, you don't have to rely on antibiotics alone when it comes to ongoing, overcoming animal challenges. Here at Ralco, um, we've been developing essential oils for, well, more than 20 years to be used in, in livestock industries. Essential oils are rapidly emerging as an alternative to antibiotics due to their natural antibiotic property properties. However, not all essential oil products are going to be the same. Here at Ralco, our essential oils are patented, consistent and proven, and this is going to result in healthier animals with a reduced need for antibiotics. At this point, I'd really like to show you a video that, that's really going to explain how essentials, essential oils work to reduce uh, harmful pathogens, and then also how Ralco has developed specific um, technologies to enhance those properties of essential oils. For decades, antibiotics have been commonly fed to livestock in low levels to increase animal growth and performance. Essential oils are rapidly emerging as an alternative to antibiotics due to their natural antimicrobial properties. In this video, we look at what is required for essential oils to make effective contact with pathogens. Antibiotics are antimicrobial, which means they kill bacteria. Unfortunately, over time, the bad bacteria or pathogens have grown resistant to many types of antibiotics and are losing their effectiveness. As a result, there is increased pressure to limit antibiotic use to preserve their effectiveness in human health. Let's start with some science. The gut is a liquid environment, and as we all know, oil and water don't mix. Oil droplets repel water and rapidly coalesce to form large droplets. The term for this is hydrophobic, or water-hating. Pathogens, on the other hand, are surrounded by an outer layer composed of lipids that are hydrophilic, or water-loving. As a result, pathogens naturally have water surrounding them, and this combination of water and lipids serves as a natural barrier between essential oils and pathogens, impacting their ability to consistently make and maintain contact. In addition, because oil coalesces into large droplets, oil droplets are significantly larger than pathogens. These large droplets have surface tension, which further limits contact with pathogens. By significantly reducing the droplet size, surface tension is lessened, allowing the oil to come closer to the water lipid barrier. Ralco has been using essential oils to improve the health and performance of livestock for more than 15 years. Our experience has revealed that the water lipid barrier and surface tension greatly impact the effectiveness and consistency of essential oils. This is what led us to invent the patented microfused process. The microfused process transforms essential oils into microscopic droplets through the use of a special emulsifier, creating 100 times more droplets. This significantly reduces surface tension since the droplets are five microns in size or smaller, similar to a bacteria. In fact, one million droplets fit on the head of a pin. The microscopic droplets have 20 times greater surface area, greatly multiplying the area of coverage. This greatly reduces the effects of surface tension and the water lipid barrier, allowing the essential oils and pathogens to come very close to each other. However, essential oils work through physical contact, so close is not good enough for consistent performance we need to establish and maintain intimate contact. This is where our unique emulsifier comes into play. Through the microfused process, each oil droplet is surrounded by millions upon millions of water-soluble atoms. Each of these atoms looks like a fuzzy structure that resembles a dandelion head. They surround the oil droplet and draw the essential oil to the pathogen, 
overcoming the water lipid barrier using van der Waals forces. These are the same forces that allow a gecko to adhere to sheer glass surfaces with only one toe. The contact is not only made, but maintained, allowing the essential oils to effectively kill the pathogen. In addition, pathogens have not been able to develop resistance to microfused essential oils like they have with antibiotics. We've observed difficult pathogens developing resistance to multiple antibiotics in as little as 24 hours, while microfused essential oils continue to be effective against the same multidrug resistant bacteria. The patented microfused process is only available from Ralco and ensures that essential oil products are a stable, consistent, and effective tool for modern livestock operations. So hopefully that video really helped you um, understand how essential oils work and also how Ralco essential oils um, are really uh, ahead of the competition in a lot of these, these uh, properties of essential oils. So here's kind of a table that shows some differences between antibiotics, other essential oil products, and Ralco essential oils as, as it pertains to pathogen re reduction and health in the animals. So when we talk about reducing pathogens, all three do a pretty good job of that. Uh, but when we get down to increasing beneficial bacteria, we know that antibiotics, um, kill all the bacteria. They don't distinguish between good and bad. Um, where other essential oil products do the same, Ralco essential oils are going to save those beneficial bacteria um, while killing the bad bugs. We're also going to support immunity. We're going to improve host health. We've got consistent performance with our technology. Uh, we, we have solutions tailored to the challenge that we're after. And I'll show you, I'll show you a little bit more on that here in a minute. And then we have our patented delivery system. So prebiotic fiber is another way that Ralco um, can help reduce antibiotic use. Prebiotics can keep animals healthy by promoting beneficial bacteria in the gut and reducing the need for antibiotics. Basically what we're gonna do with prebiotics is preferentially feed beneficial bacteria throughout the entire gut and crowd out harmful pathogenic bacteria. So that's what we're showing on the table on the right in the pictures. So there you see on the left, uh, uh, gut health that's poor, where we've got pathogens that are over overrunning the good bacteria. We add in our Actify prebiotic fiber, and you can see how we can outcompete those bad bugs for food sources and end up drowning them out so they're, so they're not affecting us. And that's what we've shown through research conducted by Purdue University where the lactobacilli is significantly increased over control and the clostridia is significantly decreased. So there we're showing we're killing the bad bugs and increasing the good bugs with this technology. This process is going to produce a balanced gut microflora, resulting in greater gut health, strengthened immunity, and superior host health. So Ralco products are formulated using the patented pending, patent pending approach called Nexus. Um, Nexus is going to map out the correct essential oil and plant extract properties to overcome over 80 health challenges. So as a result, we have a wide range of products that address the unique needs of each health challenge. So we found out how to formulate our technologies or utilize our technologies to overcome specific health challenges. In this challenge, we're going to talk about scours and our Fight Strong for Calf Stress product which was formulated to match the properties of the challenge. If you look at this, this is what it's called a nexus wheel. Um, the wheel on the left shows the challenges that are happening during that scours event. Um, we've got antimicrobial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, and immune regulation are our biggest challenges during this event. Um, so we developed Fight Strong for Calf Stress utilizing our technologies. And in this instance, the, the darker their green color, the more effect we're gonna have on those properties. So we're very good with Fight Strong for Cast Stress and antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, and competitive exclusion to help those animals overcome that challenge. Um, so we'll have a brief look at our, our products. Our Alco beef products are gonna include Start Strong for Calves, 
which is an oral drench given to newborns to get them off on a, on a good note so that they get up and, and get that first drink of colostrum. Fight strong for calf stress, which is can be delivered at a, at a capsule or a drench. Um, this is our scour treatment product. Fight strong for cattle is a feed additive used whenever we're seeing high stress, such as weaning and receiving stress. Stand strong for ruminants is an everyday feed additive just to help with daily growing and finishing stress. And then we've got Summit Mineral with Comfort and Garlic to help with summer heat stress. Comfort is our uh, trademark heat stress product. And then Garlic is going to help with uh, fly control. Our dairy products are going to include Start Strong for Calves, Fight Strong for Calf Stress, which again can be delivered in an oral capsule or an oral drench to help with scours. Stand Strong for Dairy Calves is a milk or milk replacer additive. Um, that's meant to be given throughout the milk, uh, throughout milk period, just for daily growing and scour stress. We're going to help reduce scours and help you raise an overall healthy calf. Stand strong for ruminants is a feed additive to help with daily growing and weaning stress. And then stand strong for dairy cows is another feed additive, um, that we're given to the lactation cow herd to help with daily production stress, keep them cattle healthy, keep those cows on feed. Fight Strong for Uterine Balance is our uh, uterine stress capsule, given intrauterine to help with uterine infections, retain placentas, things like that. Utter Sol is our utter stress product. It is a topical product that helps with overall utter health. So to, it is a review um, to prepare for 263, we need to find a vet to work with that meets your operation needs, establish a VCR and health protocols, determine where you're going to purchase your antibiotics. Remember, many of your suppliers that have previously sold over-the-counter antibiotics may not want to go through these regulations. So you need to be um, in contact with your supplier to see what your options are and make sure they're going to go about selling these antibiotics. And then ultimately, we want to reduce antibiotic use with preventative health products. And remember, this GFI 263 does go into full effect on June 11th, 2023. So it's coming up pretty quick. This spring, we're going to need to uh, start thinking about these regulations. Um, so if you want to learn more about GFI 263, please go to our website at www.ralcoagriculture.com slash GFI 263. We've got a uh, GFI 263 survival guide that really goes into detail a lot of what we talked about today, but also some key intervention points where we can maybe um, reduce our antibiotic use. Then also on that same website, you can schedule a free consultation with a ruminant specialist here at RALCO. And my contact information is there. So please contact me for any of your questions or concerns. Um, and please have a wonderful day and a wonderful week, and we look forward to helping you in the future.